What's up, podcast listeners and YouTube watchers, and welcome back to another movie review. I'm Chase Lee, and the movie I'm going to be reviewing right now is Ugly Dolls, or Ugly Dolls. Uh, there's no space in between it, which I thought there was, but it's just all one word with weird capitalization in the middle of it, but hey, here we are. Uh, this, this one comes from Styx Films, and this one is an animated film. I think it's their first venture into the animated market. I could be wrong, but I think this is Styx's first... Um, kind of attack at a mainstream kind of like wide uh, or wide to their scale uh, animated film. And this one follows uh, a group of toys, dolls, uh, so to speak. And there's uh, some rejects that, you know, go across the factory line and they're shoved into a different part of the factory where a bunch of them uh, have started this new colony, this new town called Uglyville. And there is a main character uh, uh, called Rock or Moxie. And, uh, you know, she, she's really, you know, optimistic. She's like, someone's going to take me. I'm going to be, uh, in, um, uh, an owner's life one day. Someone's going to want to love me. And, uh, a lot of people are just like, no, you're ugly. It's not going to happen. And of course, uh, she escapes through a tunnel. Cause this is where, you know, these dolls kind of fall from. She's like, L you know, let me see what's on the other side. And she eventually reaches across the other end of the tunnel where a lot of the quote unquote perfect dolls are and you know they're getting you know prepped up and ready to go out of the factory to consumers and stuff so it's a mix of trolls in the sense of it has musical numbers even to the animation uh quality to some degree like toy story in the terms of like toys are alive and you know they want to go find their right owners uh even down to the, like the villain being kind of like uh uh love the bear, uh, the bear from uh, Toy Story 3, I forgot his name, but um, and also like Monsters, Inc., even down to character de designs. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's like the mix of all three of those shoved into this one. So, you know, going into it, I didn't really expect much. I got to be quite frank with you because the trailer to me just looked like Styx Films uh, kind of grab at like merchandising. And it's like, oh, we're only making this to sell toys, which I totally get that. It is a business after all. Disney does it all the time, but it's like you could at least have some pride a little bit and put in some effort into your work and not just make it a full-on hour-and-a-half commercial for toys that you want to sell. So that's the vibe I got from the trailer, and I got back from the movie, and the trailer pretty much confirms that. Um, it's a bad movie, but I think I'm going to approach this review into two camps. Uh, review it just on how I saw it, and then, of course how families and how kids are going to react to this because it's going to be two separate things. Because uh, you guys are going to watch this review or look at me and be like, oh, look at this old man with no kids. How, is he, how are we going to take him seriously on like what's quality family entertainment? That's a good point. So I, I will give you my perspective on how I saw it and then, of course, what I think uh, families and kids will uh, get out of this. So I got to be honest with you, everything about this was really – kind of flat and bland and really felt straight to DVD uh, type of quality where even the animation was a downgrade. And I, I realize this isn't Pixar or DreamWorks, but it's like, it's been, spend more time on it. I don't know. Throw few, some more millions of dollars. I don't know, Sticks. You got, I'm sure you got a little bit floating around there. Like uh, if you want to up the quality a little bit, you know, put more effort into it. But the animation, just the detail and the finesse was lacking. I felt like, you know, like even down to like the clothes and the hair and just the, you know, the textures of buildings or the ground, it just, everything just felt so flat and there was no depth to anything that you were looking at. So even on a visual front, it was kind of bland and that's actually kind of um, bad because, you know, at least with like animated films, even if you hate it, you can walk away going, well, there were some sequences or there were some shots or some scenes that were animated pretty well and really kind of captured this, you know, bright and fun and beautiful looking environment. But this just had none of that. So the animation, it, it's it's passable at best. And that is not what you want for a theatrical movie. And speaking of theatrical, this movie doesn't even feel theatrical at all. Everything about this movie, even down to the way the story is um, directed and executed, even down to the voice casting, the songs, everything about it felt like a streaming movie. It felt like this would be a perfect film to watch with your family. Like, you know, if it was like a rainy day outside and you did not want to go outside, uh, you 
pop it on Netflix and just walk away for an hour and a half and then there you go. But there was nothing about this that screamed, I needed to be in a theater to watch this. Um, so once again, just kind of that straight to DVD quality and just, you know, kind of boring. You know, it's not really something that keeps the attention going either. So once again, perfect to just sit in front of your kid at home and just walk away. So, um, so yeah, I touched upon that. I don't, I don't really think it's uh, anything to write home about in terms of um, the theatrics of the film. It's just, it's just kind of bare bones in that regard. You know, the thing is with the, the actual story and approaching themes of like imperfection and that no one's perfect. Um, it's not about looks. It's about, you know, what's on the inside that counts, you know, Typically, beautiful people might have ugly souls, vice versa. You know, what you perceive as ugly, you know, you might have a beautiful soul. And th that's kind of the whole point is that no one's really ugly or beautiful. It's just um, on, on a physical level, it's more about what's in here that counts and uh, just being a good person. So I get the themes. I get the, the story lines that this film wants to direct at kids. And I actually like that. It's it's sweet. It's nice. This is what it's the type of film that if you know if kids below the age of ten are having a hard time in school, or if their self esteem is a little down, I think this is probably the the perfect remedy to that. And just kind of watching something that's that is a little lighter and um, a little fun, and you know has these messages that kind of get your confidence back up. Um, so I do in that regard. I do like it quite a bit, but other than that, the story itself is just very, um, it's fully, very cliched stuff that we've seen before. They borrow from three different movies. The dialogue is two on the head, and it's just like, guys, come on, can we be a little bit more subtle with it? The humor kind of falls flat most of the time, and I'll get into that into when I talk about the family aspect. Um, so yeah, it's very, it's very bare bones stuff. It's like no, I didn't feel like any creativity was was injected into this. You know, when you have one of the co-directors of Shrek 2, that's one of the films on his uh, filmography, uh, Kelly Asbury, forgot to mention that at the top, it's directed by the, this gentleman. It's like, like, where, where, where is that? And then, then where is this? And it's just, it, it's such a fall down. It's just, you know, once again, I realize the budgets are different, but, you know, you can, you can at least try. Um, the voice acting is kind of, so so to be honest with you it's serviceable at best like i don't even want to use the word fine when it comes to this it's just like it's serviceable you know when they get into the acting you know uh bits where they're talking as their characters no one really stood out to me maybe besides nick jonas because he looked like he was having some type of fun uh he plays the villain well <clears throat> villain in the movie um everyone else was just like they provided voices out of these you know, animated objects and cool. I mean, I didn't really feel like anyone brought their character to life any more than what the page did. So there's that. On the other hand, when you hire a bunch of actors, or excuse me, a bunch of singers in acting roles and you have a bunch of musical numbers, yeah, they're going to deliver the musical numbers properly, but those musical numbers didn't even need to be there. So it's like you're, you're, you're flaunting their skills as singers, which is, I guess, fine in the right you know, context and, and also in the right movie, but this was not the right movie to do that. It just, everything just didn't hit. And, you know, with that being said, it was also the conviction of the characters. I didn't really care about anything that was going on. I didn't care about any, any stakes that were going on. Just um, when someone was in danger, it just, it would be over within 30 seconds. So it didn't really have any consequences to it. I know, I know you guys are probably like, why are you dissecting this movie? It's for, for kids, it's for families. I get that. But you got to try a little bit more. Animation is, is one of those genres to me that's very special. You know, I, I was born in 1990. I grew up in the Disney Renaissance in the early 90s. It's what, it was the first genre I ever watched. I'm hard on it, okay? And so when you have stuff like a Toy Story or like How to Train Your Dragon, you know, just stuff like that recently, it's like those are films that try. Those are films that try to be you know, more than just a kid's movie with, you know, fast moving colors and terrible, you know, fart and burp jokes. So it's just like, there's a fine line. You got, you got to try a little bit. And, you know, this whole film just seemed like a giant commercial to advertise future toys. So I would personally give it a D. 
um, only because it's a competent film. Uh, the messages are, you know, good for kids, and then also um, the music is is light. It's poppy. It's it's fluffy. I think uh, you know, kids. I think kids will like it. I guess. Um, but that leads me into the second part of this, to where, so you're like, okay, so you didn't like it. How are families and kids going to react to it? You know, when I go see animated movies or uh, family movies, I gauge the audience. And I gauge them to see how kids react. Are they restless? Are they engaged? Do they do they laugh at the jokes? How, how do the parents react? Do they, you know, take out their kids because they have to go to the bathroom 20 times throughout the movie because they're bored? Like, what is, what is the scope on this? I got to be honest with you. I don't know. Um, the, the whole audience was like this. It was like just kind of teetering back and forth between like, eh, kind of good, kind of bad. Like, you know, most of the jokes the kids, you know, kind of dismissed. Um you know, I think some of them were feeling restless because I felt a lot of them talking or I heard a lot of them talking um, to their parents like, you know, I, I need to go, like, go to the bathroom or like I'm bored. Not those exact words, but like conversations that led to that. And it's just, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I don't feel, once again, going back to the whole like theatrical pr- uh, presentation of this, I don't feel like it is warranted to see it in a theater. I think kids will get restless, even with, you know, the, the fast moving colors and you know some of the humor and even the messages i just think for this type of film it's a perfect like rental streaming movie and if you were watching it at home they probably would be less restless but uh, yeah that was kind of the audience that i was i was engaged with um so i think if you are a family or you know and you want to like show your kids something this weekend to be honest with you, don't go this weekend. You have Avengers Endgame still rocking its second weekend. It's going to be crowded. You do not want to deal with the the crowds and the anxiety of that. Trust me, I've been there. J- just wait until the next weekend to go see it if you want to watch a kid's movie or just anything. Wait until it comes on. I'm not saying avoid this. I, I'm going to avoid it because I don't want to ever watch it again. But I do think families and kids might enjoy it on some type of like home base level and not really like a public viewing um experience so that's kind of my uh my review of this movie ugly dolls what'd you guys think of this movie comment in that place is right below my face and let me know and uh yeah uh that will do it for this review guys and i will see you guys next time for whatever i review next i will see you guys later